Hey Onda, I'm Jenny and thanks for watching Doing Life with Jenny. Today I'm telling you about selling my house and moving into a studio apartment. So I was working with a realtor who is actually a friend and ex-coworker of mine and we decided we were going to go ahead and put like a coming soon announcement on the website and that it would officially be on the market ready to view on a Friday. Immediately after him posting coming soon, I had a flood of people signing up to see the house that weekend. Um, I even woke up to... Let's wait for Lola to walk on by. No, she's not going to lie down. We'll just deal with her noise in the background. There's Lola. I woke up from a text from my cousin saying that her cousin from the other side of her family was very, very interested in buying the house and that he had had such bad luck because like the houses were just flying off the market and I felt so, so bad because my house once again flew off the market. He didn't even get a chance to see it. Essentially, the first person that came to see it put an offer on it, which I accepted. 20 grand over asking price. So my realtor had the daunting task of calling all of the other realtors, telling them the house was now under contract and to cancel the appointment if they wanted to. So my schedule freed up very quickly because at that time I had my two beagles plus two foster chihuahuas. So I was going to have to load them up in the car and just hang out somewhere for a couple hours. And that was going to be very annoying. Um, so luckily I didn't have to do that except for once. So being the organized person I am, had already been looking at apartments. And even before I started the apartment hunt, I assumed I would probably end up um, at the same place where I rented previously. Um, I rented for about a year in between selling my old house and buying my current house. This is probably the last video you're going to see in this house. Not that you can really tell on the video because I usually don't have any kind of background except for today the couch because that's the only place I have to sit at the moment. Once I started doing my research, I confirmed that I still wanted to work with that company. Um, it's one company that owns four apartment complexes on the same street. I really liked them because one, it's even closer to work. I'm already kind of close to work, but it's like extra close. Two, um, they just seemed very responsible and organized last time I rented from them. And three, it is the like only affordable option in the area, at least that's like livable because I did see another that looked a little sketchy just in the pictures and usually things look better in the pictures and even worse in person, so yeah. The day after getting the contract on the house, I called the apartment's leasing office and got everything squared away. I went down to sign some papers and also I didn't know they had a move in special. I only had to pay $299. Um, that covers the first month's rent and there was no deposit and thanks to these little brats hi Ruthie, hi Lola I had to pay an extra $200 pet fee but at least that's a one-time fee instead of like a monthly pet rent I prefer it that way just get the payment out of the way but I'll give you the details on the apartment and I'll give you a tour later on that's not the purpose of this video this video is talking more about my emotions and this whole process of slowly transitioning into moving to Mexico. Let me preface the last half of the video by saying my whole life I've kind of always done things by the book. I did well in school, I went to college, I bought my first house at, let's see, was I 20, I guess I was 22 or almost 22. Um, sold that house, like I said, moved to the apartment for a year before I bought this house. So you may be wondering, how am I feeling when kind of downgrading by American standards, moving from a three bedroom, two bath house with a garage to a 350, if that's incorrect, I'll put it on the screen, 350 square foot studio apartment. I kind of have mixed emotions to be honest. On one hand, I'm very excited, maybe nervous, like a nervous excitement because I'm reaching my goal of moving to Mexico. Like I just needed to sell the house. I didn't want to be ready to move to Mexico and have a house sitting on the market that wouldn't sell. So got that out of the way. Like I'm one step closer to reaching my dream. I'm also a very creative person. So it will actually be fun for me to work with the little space I have and make it like feel like a living room and make it feel like a bedroom, not just one 
big room. Moving to the studio apartment is also helping me reach my goal of saving money to live off of once I move to Mexico. Um, yeah, I could have stayed in the house and continued working side hustles or renting an extra bedroom or two to a roommate, but when you own the home, there's always that chance that there could be a huge expense and then there goes all of your money, like literally all of it or a good chunk of it. Um, I mean, I don't think anything is going to happen because literally I have fixed the entire house up. The roof replaced, AC replaced, furnace replaced, flooring replaced. It's all been done, but with my luck, that would just be how it goes, like ready to move and something catastrophic would happen. So by renting, I ensure that that's somebody else's responsibility, not mine. On the other hand, I did work very hard to buy the house and to fix it up the way I like it and to make those repairs, even though the repair part is not as fun as the decorating part. I think that would be hard for anyone to kind of work for a goal and then like you move on to your next stage of life. I already reached this goal. I already purchased a home. I already decorated a home. It's time to move on. And yeah, that's a little hard because you work so hard to reach that goal in the first place. Uh, I think the thing that is bothering me most is that I will have to take the dogs out on a leash in the rain, in the cold, in the heat, whereas now I literally just open the back door half clothed, they go out and then they knock when they want to come back in. Easy enough. And now I'll have to drag myself out, bundle up and take them, which is fine. Like it's a small sacrifice to make. There are people that have far worse problems than that. So I should not complain about that. And the last point of the video is that I do feel like there is some kind of stigma, especially around millennials that, oh, they can't afford to buy houses and or they're still living with mom and dad or only renting an apartment. And I think I will feel like pressure to say, oh yeah, I live in a studio, but, and then give them this whole backstory of how I owned two houses previously and yada, yada, yada. Um, like it's not my personality to like, keep up with the Joneses and I have the newer phone than you and the newer car than you, like that's not me at all. But also like, I don't wanna be your typical millennial. The reason I'll be in this apartment is very different than other people's reasons. And maybe they have very valid reasons as well. Even if they can't afford the house, like I don't blame them. There is a huge problem in society when it comes to salary versus cost of living. I imagine there will be people that don't know me or that don't see the videos thinking like, what's wrong with Jenny? Like, is she going bankrupt or did she lose her job? Like, she had a 2020 Encore, now she drives a 1999 piece of junk. She owned a house, now she's moving to not an apartment, but a studio apartment, thinking like I'm poor. Quite the opposite. Um, a lot of times, the richer the person looks, the poorer they are. I now have zero debt. The mortgage was the only thing I had that I owed money on. Because as we know, I sold the car the other day, haven't had student loans in a few years now. I have never had credit card debt. Um, I don't have any kind of personal loans. This is it. Financial freedom, folks, it's happening. Just to clarify, it doesn't really matter how much money you make, unless of course you're not making enough to survive. What matters is that you live within your means. Whatever you do earn, you know how to manage what you do have. My friend just came to buy my kitchen table. So we're really low on furniture now. We have the couch and the bedroom and that's it. Um, so please let me know in the comment section, how would you feel in my shoes? I really appreciate you watching today's video. I appreciate the support. Please turn on the notification bell and subscribe so you can continue following me on my journey in moving from the US to Mexico. Take care.